This video is brought to you in part by SecondChanceGaming.com. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, so if you're looking to buy or sell cards, then definitely check out their site linked in the description. I'm a big fan of how they do business, so check them out and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But with that out of the way, let's get straight into the video. Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another card review slash discussion type video on a new card that has been spoiled for release over in Japan in their newest Duelist pack, Legend of Duelist. Now, I have no idea when we're going to be getting that imported to us. But I do know that there's a lot of neat and nifty cards in there supporting a lot of different characters from the show's archetypes and themes in the form of, you know, Pegasus's new Thousand Eyes support in the form of Millennium Eyes, the Bandit Keith Barrel Dragon support, the Chaz Armed Dragon and Ojama support. There's a lot of neat things that are being wrapped up into that set and so I'm actually really curious to know when that kind of thing would be imported to us over here TCG side, but that is not what we're going to be talking about today. Today what we're going to be talking about the newest piece of Crystal Beast Legacy support that has been spoiled for release in that very pack, and that is the spell card Crystal Bonds. Now this is a normal spell card, and it has a very simple effect. Its effect is, add one Crystal Beast monster from your deck to your hand, and if you do, place one Crystal Beast monster with a different name from your deck face up in your spell and trap card zones as a continuous spell. You can only activate one Crystal Bonds per turn. Now, this card is actually fantastic. Uh, this card is great, it's very generic, it does exactly what it says on the 10. It's a Rota that also puts a different named Crystal Beast from your deck into one of your spell and trap card zones. Now, this is very good in terms of a resource you know, management side, as well as it's very good in terms of just what it allows the deck capabilities of play line into. Specifically, if you add Crystal Beast Sapphire Pegasus from your deck to your hand off of this, because then you can normal summon Sapphire Pegasus, which will then put another Crystal Beast monster from your deck into one of your spell and trap card zones, which is then going to allow you quick and easy access into some of your more powerful spell cards like Crystal Beacon, Rare Value, stuff like that. And it gets you ever so closer to your things like Crystal Abundance uh, and stuff like that. And Crystal Abundance is kind of like the win condition for the Crystal Beast deck, isn't it? Well, actually, wait. Hold on. It's been a minute since uh, Crystal Abundance has been in the metagame. Crystal Abundance sends every card on the field from the deck to the grave, and then you get to OTK your opponent essentially with Crystal Beast Monsters. But that hasn't been relevant in a f little while, and I think the game has probably evolved past that, considering how many true floaters that we have in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! We have the Pendulum Monsters, the entire Pendulum mechanic. Uh, just in the current game, we have the ABC cards, which ABC Dragon Buster would tag out into the A, B, and C, and then they would get searches, add cards back in C with summon cards from hand so they don't die. And then, and then you uh, then you have things like Burning Abyss and Shadals that are still in the format. Or Shadals a lot less than Burning Abyss, but Burning Abyss did recently just top YCS London, and it's still very much a viable rogue deck to play. It's one of the more powerful rogue decks to play. Huh. Crystal Abundance is not, the more and more I'm thinking about it, Crystal Abundance is just not as good in modern Yu-Gi-Oh! as it once was, and that's insane that I'm saying something like this, like a card, uh, like this about a card, like Crystal Abundance. That's actually blowing my mind. Crystal Abundance just isn't that good anymore. Wow. But anyway, Crystal Bonds does do a good amount of uh, service for the deck in general. Uh, also because, like, we never got those Pendulum cards imported to the TCG, so can't wait to find out how long it takes us to import this card to the TCG. I'm not bitter. I swear. <laughs> I am so upset that we never got to play those Crystal Beast Pendulum cards because they're very good in design. However, they are very good in design for the Pendulum era, but then they're also very good in design for the Master Rule 4 Link era because of this card specifically. Because of Master Rule 4, your Pendulum Zones are no longer separate from your Spell and Trap Card Zones. Your leftmost and your rightmost Spell and Trap Card Zone are Pendulum Zones if a Pendulum Monster gets put in them. So, what this means is that you can use this card, at least in my head, at least in my mind, you can use this card to add something like Sapphire Pegasus or any Crystal Beast from your deck to your hand, and then you could put a crystal wait no the pendulum monsters aren't crystal beast cards they're just crystal cards crisis averted even though it probably wasn't a crisis i was in my head i was work, working through the thought process of being able to put the pendulum monsters into the pendulum zones <laughs> as face-up spells uh with this card but i believe it's crystal vanguard and and crystal warrior or something like that but they're definitely not crystal beast cards uh so they can't be put there with uh this card so 
That's fine. That's all fine and good, but this is still a very good card for the regular Crystal Beast deck because it does allow you to get closer to those power spells, like I've already said, like your rare values and stuff to allow you to get further into your deck. That's something that Crystal Beast really needs if it's going to try and apply its 2007 cards to 2017 cards. A full 10 plus years has passed since Crystal Beasts got their like biggest support waves. And so it, it, they really just need a boost to consistency and they need a boost to speed of putting Crystal Beasts in their spell and trap card zones because your opponent's not going to start destroying them until they probably already have game. It's not like the slow paced game of Yu-Gi-Oh that we used to play where you could be like, I'm going to set Emerald Turtle and they're going to kill it and it's going to go into my spell and trap zone. Then next turn I'm going to summon another monster and then it's going to go into my spell and trap card zone. And then next turn I'm going to summon Pegasus and then there's going to be another card going into my zone. You can't play those turn by turn games anymore in modern Yu-Gi-Oh, which is a damn shame, but this card is at least a stepping stone to try and alleviate this alongside cards like Crystal Tree and stuff like that. You could start actually putting a lot of Crystal Beast monsters into your spell and trap card zones very quickly, very rapidly on a single turn basis. And that is very good for support for the theme in terms of the cards that it can utilize. But then that's also good for trying to summon like the new Rainbow Dragon cards because I'm aware that there is a new Rainbow Dragon. There's new Rainbow Dragon support cards that are just, you know, a little bit better than the old ones. But I can't recall what exactly they do. <laughs> I just know that they were spoiled for release in Japan. I have no idea when we're getting those either. It's definitely something that I'm probably going to look back on um, after I get done filming this video and start figuring out where this could tie in. Because I definitely, I would like to play Crystal Beasts for the channel in an upcoming video. I think this card is fantastic. It starts, it at least starts the, the process for starting to give the deck something to allow it to be a little bit more playable by modern new standards because like i said crystal tree plus this card plus like searching sapphire pegasus like that can already potentially be three cards in your spell and trap card zones um so like that's that's actually really good uh that actually i'm lying that could be four if you play crystal tree then play crystal bonds you put a thing there crystal tree gets a counter summon pegasus put a card there crystal tree gets another counter then you can pop off crystal tree placing two more, and then all of a sudden you're at four, and then you're already at your abundance range, um, you're already at multiple card ranges, and you're, you know, basically five out of seven steps into Rainbow Dragon plays, potentially. There's a few different things that you have capabilities of doing with this kind of card, and if we get more cards like it, that just, you know, sort of speed up the Crystal Beast engine to a point where it's at least more playable by modern Yu-Gi-Oh standards, like I'm saying. Modern Yu-Gi-Oh is pretty volatile in terms of how quickly games are played, so pretty hard for you to try and play old school Crystal Beast strats in New Age Yu-Gi-Oh! But I would definitely love if Crystal Beast got more cards like Crystal Bonds. I really like the Crystal Beast theme. It's one of the themes that I really like the artwork of and like the theme of, like how it was themed around literally just gems. Another reason why I like gym knights, like I've I've got this like I've got this thing where I really like art types that have really good like lore-ish and archetypal like uh, artwork designs. And this card has fantastic artwork, by the way, while I'm on the aspect of that. This card's artwork is adorable. I love it. It's literally Ruby Carbuncle getting some love. That's adorable. It's like a little pet. I would pay infinite amounts of money to have a pet that looks like Ruby Carbuncle. To just, like, sit in my lap or sit on my shoulder or whatever. This, that card has always been adorable. And so this artwork is also just super cute. And I love it. But anyway, I want to know what your guys' thoughts are on this card in the comments down below. Um... I really hope that if they do import this card to the TCG, they use that as an excuse to give us the Crystal Beast Pendulums that we, again, never got. They just, they just remain OCG exclusives, um, which kind of sucks considering I would have loved to have played with those cards during Pendulum Era, but now we can't. RIP. <laughs> but anyway, let me know what your thoughts are on this card and all that sort of stuff and the stuff I've said in the comments down below. If you think I've missed anything, then definitely let me know as well. But otherwise, as always, guys... Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe to all the nonsense you usually do. Links as always are in the description down below to my Facebook fan page as well as my personal Patreon page. If you want to support the channel and you like the videos I've been making as of recently and want to support my ability to continue making them, then Patreon is the best way to do so. As well as if you're interested in getting into my private Discord server or me and a bunch of other people, chat on a daily basis. Or if you're interested in Yu-Gi-Oh! monthly product giveaways, then definitely go check out the reward tiers over on the Patreon link in the description. And any support you'd like to give the channel or myself, you have my gratitude and thanks in advance for because it helps out a, an immense amount, like I've said many times in the past. But regardless, as I've already said 
Thanks for watching. Thanks for your time. And as usual, guys, take care. I'll see you in the next video. But anyway, now that the video's over, I'd like to give a special thanks to Travis Miller, Iradium, Jay Garcia, Yuki Phoenix, Troy Perkins, and Eric Gertson, as well as everybody else that's currently supporting me on Patreon this month. You guys help out a lot more than you may know. You have my eternal gratitude, and you guys are forever awesome. Thank you so much for the support.